So I'm, I'm, uh, I work for Oklahoma State University in Extension Service. I'm the area horticulturist for the southeast part of the state. A few years ago, we were setting up a little demonstration uh, planning of just some different things that, that small-scale growers, farmers, market growers, etc., might do. And one of the one of the uh, faculty members in Stillwater had been growing tomatoes. In dealing with the problem of, of uh, when you get in the summertime, the high temperatures, and, and you get the problem that you know when it's when it's still 90 degrees at nine o'clock at night, tomatoes just don't set fruit. So he was uh, he was looking at some different ways to shade the tomato plants. Uh, is a way to try to try to lower that field heat earlier in the day and, and, and increase tomato fruit set. And he, he introduced me to these hoops. Uh, here's, and what actually I forgot to bring it along, but he what he was using these for, he'd put them over the tomatoes and had them elevated, but he used a piece of shade cloth. Uh, I don't know, was there any, there might have been some shade cloth on some of these houses, but it, it was basically a black, uh, loosely woven material that, and they come, those shade cloths come in, you know, 50% shade, 40% shade, so they're, they're engineered to provide a, a, a specified amount of shade. So, so anyhow, that's how I got introduced to these. Uh, like I said, I, I was then, uh, I'd be, one of the insects I've been dealing with quite a bit is squash bugs. And, uh, you know, in the past we did work with using insecticides to control them. We did work with trap crops uh, to, as a way of keeping squash bugs out of watermelon. You can plant squash outside the field because the squash bug really prefers squash to watermelon. If, if there's nothing else there, the squash bugs will come out of overwintering in early, in early spring and get in your watermelon and cause problems. But if you've got squash there, uh, they will go there first and that protects your watermelon. So I was doing some of those kind of things. Well, as time went on, uh, and, I, and I talk a lot to different uh, home gardeners and in, uh, uh, various, various uh, scale vegetable growers, and I was hearing repeatedly that squash bugs were driving people crazy. You know, they, they tried everything, and some of them had, had, some of the smaller scale growers had given up on it, uh, on trying to even grow squash because of, of the squash bugs. So uh, I, I then also heard, you know, we don't, I don't see them down here so much. Maybe if you all uh, do and tell, tell them, I'd, uh, I'd be glad to know, but uh, squash vine borer can be another serious insect pest of, of, uh, of squash. They're, they're, I guess, quite a, quite a big problem in the northeast part of the state. I just don't see them down here, uh, so, you know, it, uh, why I don't know. But, but anyhow, those are insects that the way they get to the crop is they fly in as adults. So they're, they're a large insect that, that's, that's coming and getting on the crop. At that point, they lay their eggs and they hatch out, and then you've got tiny insects that are causing the damage. But, but you've got a large insect that's flying in and getting to the crop. So uh, we got to thinking about that there, and in fact, you can see in the literature, you know, one thing you could do is put a row cover of some sort over your squash plants to keep those large insects, squash bugs, uh, squash vine borers, uh, and cucumber beetles, is a way of keeping them off the squash plants. So, uh, we began dabbling with that, looking at how to do it. One of the things about it, though, is it, uh, when, the, uh, when the squash begin to flower, you need to remove your cover. And why is that? Pollination. Pollination. If you leave it covered, you'll have beautiful plants in there with little tiny squash, but they'll never develop. So, so we started looking at ways of, of using that cover, uh, using that cover and, and seeing just how long you could leave it on. For example, sometimes we remove it right at first flowering. Sometimes we wait a couple weeks, give the plant some time to get a little bigger, uh, be setting more, more, putting on more flowers on a daily basis, and then remove the cover. And, and at that point, you allow the pollinators in, but also your insect pests get in there. Uh, that led to some other work where we, were, where we were doing things, looking at covering the squash completely, waiting until it's beginning to flower, and then opening the cover in the morning, just a short period to allow the pollinators in uh, that by in, in, in midsummer, by 10 in the morning, the pollinators, in fact, the flowers on a lot of squash varieties, they'll be closing up by 10 in the morning. So you just open it up, let those pollinators work for, uh, you know, from sun up until about 9 or 10 in the morning, and then close it up, and you at least you minimize the amount of time that the insect pests have access to your, to your plants. So, so those are some of the things we've been doing. Now, uh, okay, the... These hoops, this is similar to the one that Steve mentioned up there that, that you can get a bender to make. Uh, now there's, uh, yesterday in, in Steve showed in one of the picture his, a, a bender that he can use to do all, you know, all different uh, types of tubing and, and different curvatures and things. But this deal here is available from Johnny's Selected Seed and it's specifically designed 
to make these hoops, okay? It won't, it won't make those bigger hoops like the house up there that Steve has. They have a different one that has a different angle or different uh, curvature that can be used to make those larger hoops. But this one here uh, can be used to make these hoops and it, it costs about $70. So, you know, pretty, and, and I'll tell you once, you, once you do two or three, if you're careful, you can make identical hoops and it takes about two to three minutes a piece. So you can make a lot of them real quick. The material is the e half inch EMT tubing, 10 foot sections you use. Uh, it caught, if you buy, in fact, you buy in quantity, it'd be cheaper, about $2 a, a, a length. So, and as long as you don't drive over it or hit it with your mower or anything, uh, with your tractor, it'll last a long time. So, uh, so, so it, you, basically you can build a small structure uh, fairly cost effectively as, as far as the support portion of it. So to get back to our, our squash bug uh, issue, uh, we got a little bit of grant money to do this so we could do it and we did it on some, you know, in several farms throughout the state, some up in Shawnee, some up by Tulsa, uh, some in Atoka County. And we were kind of just having to scramble and figure out, you know, there's a lot of materials out there. Uh, we needed something to be big enough that we could uh, cut a piece that would go over top of this entire hoop and be able to, actually what we did is to close it up, we put soil down here on the ground so, so it'd be sealed up tightly to keep the insects from getting into it. Uh, this one is, this is sold as, uh, as, uh, as a frost blanket. It's a DeWitt material, uh, kind of heavy, but we, I had worked with some of these lighter materials. Had worked with some of these lighter materials uh, that are, uh, this is a spun bonded one. Uh, Trouble with these, once they've been out in the sunlight in, in the middle of July, uh, after two or three weeks, they get to where they won't take much and they can get a tear in them. So, you know, strong windy day, all of a sudden you got some op openings there. So, so we opt to do our research, we opted for getting a, this little bit heavier material and, you know, it's going to block some sunlight, but we have, uh, the, the sunlight intensity is more than adequate that, you know, if you cut back 30% of the sun, which is about what this is supposed to, to block out, uh, you still got plenty of sunlight for squash. Now, one thing about it, when you've got this thing, and again, these are closed up, the ends are closed up also, it'll get warm in there. In fact, in midday on a nice sunny day, uh, I measured up to 140 degrees inside there. But that didn't seem to bother the squash, and we still had fruit set and all, so, you know, it may have impacted it some, I don't know, but uh, in, in, it was working, and it, was, it did a good job of keeping, even aphids we kept, were able to keep out of them, so, so it did good job so so anyhow that was my initial experience working with this we're uh, again because of the problem of the heat another thing when this is on there you can't see your plants so you've got to open it up to get in there and see you know if you have any disease coming on or if insects have gotten in so this this year we kind of started looking at some different materials that we could put on as covers and, and again looking to see if they'll keep out those large adult insects the squash bugs and and, and uh, and squash fine bores and this is one of them and this is this material is uh and you come up and look at it and feel it's a woven material but it's uh it's sold in the uh in the uh uh for, for fruit fruit production and it's it's i think it's called a a bee and hornet and some some something other uh insect cover that's the reason they sell that's what they sell it for comes in big rolls wide widths and all that so you can get it and, and it was, and I don't have the exact, if you want information on these, where to get these things and, and, and on the prices and all that, or at least the, the, the suppliers, I can, you can, my email's on that sheet, send me an email and I'll, I'll, I'll I forgot to add that to two things. So, to, so if you want to get access, in fact, Steve Hill told me about this particular product right here. Uh, and then I had another one that got hold of another one that's similar to trying. Now one, it, it'll keep the adult insects out. One thing with squash bugs we found though, is that in, there were, there were large, we had large squash plants in here. Uh, there were squash bugs walking all over the outside of this thing trying to get to those plants, uh, but it, it was keeping them out. But I think one thing that did happen, that they will lay eggs right on the, on the cover, and eventually we found squash bugs inside, and I think they just laid eggs, they was hatched, and some of those, uh, some of those uh, uh, nymphs were small enough to get through, and then they, they got in and got to the plant. So, but, uh, but again, for, it, it did give us a lot, it bought us a lot of time to, it, it, it was effective to, to keep the insects out for, for a, a pretty good, pretty prolonged period. So, uh, again, I, once I became familiar with these hoops and we, we made a whole bunch of them to do our trial, so I had them on hand. Uh, we had a tomato uh, 
variety trial down by Hugo this summer and uh, we were doing this a grower down there and he had over a two day period had about six inches of rain so our nice big tomato plants full of fruit staked up all of a sudden fell over the, the the ground got so wet the stakes couldn't hold it up and we were looking at there was there was no way we could have stood them back up so we were looking at what are we going to do our, our tomatoes are starting to sunburn since I had this stuff on hand we we, we took it out there uh, the way I set it up put them in just drive pieces of rebar into the ground and then slip it over it so it's we, we tried pushing the, the hoop itself into the ground at first that doesn't work but this is this works real good so so once we had this stuff on hand over all the rows of our tomato trial we, we went in and put our hoops up real quickly uh, used some of this material fold in all we did was cover <clears throat> like from here to the other side there we didn't cover the sides but just to have something over top and that provided plenty of shade and that protected our fruit so that saved our our, our tomato variety trial so uh, again what I'm what I'm thinking I really like these there's you know once it's a little bit of investment to get them at first but I think there's a whole lot of things when you're growing field vegetables that you'll be able to do with them to to put them to use you know if you had some things out early and you wanted to warm the so we got into a cold spell and you want to warm up, you could just put some polyethylene over it and create yourself a little greenhouse, uh, you know, for a temporary, maybe just for a few weeks or something like that. Uh, if, uh, you know, if, if uh, stormy weather is predicted and you've got some nice strawberries out there or, or what have you, you could put some, put some kind of cover on there to protect from heavy rains, possible hail and those sort of things. Uh, another thing would be, uh, Again, if you have some fruit crop out there or something that birds might bother, uh, and these are, you're, you're all seeing these kind of materials, but, you know, stretch something like this over these hoops, and that'll, uh, you can set it up pretty quickly, and that'll protect your crop for that, from that type of a situation, so a problem. So, we, uh, again, we're doing research. We needed a way to uh, be able to put our covers on and take them off, you like when we were opening them in the morning and close them. What we came up with, and at first I didn't think this would be something practical for growers, but it was something, you know, that we could do. We just got these big binder clips, and if you just go to your an office supply store, they'd be a little expensive, but you can. there's a place called Bulk Office Supply, and you can buy a whole bunch of them at a, at a pretty reasonable cost. I mean, we probably bought about a thousand of them, so, uh, and, they, and they hope they've, that we've used them for several years. They hold up pretty good, so just, you know, basically just clip it on there, and that holds things in place pretty tightly, so. Uh, that's about what I had. If there's any questions, yeah, he asked if this is the material I use to keep the squash, uh, the, the squash bugs out. Yeah, I did a little trial this summer where I basically planted some squash uh, and covered it up and just left that cover on there, uh, waiting to see if if the insects would get to it. And that's where I did find that. I mean, it, they, it took a while, but. Uh, eventually, I, and I think what happened is that they'd laid some eggs and they'd hatched and got in there that way, but the adults did not get through it. So, you know, as long as you don't get a hole in it. So this is adequate to keep them out? This will keep adult, adult squash bugs out, yeah. So. And the rest of the day? Or okay, we, and um, again, we're, we've, we've, we had three, trial, three locations of this trial over two years. We're sorting through the data so we can, you know, you know across the board tell you what it does do and doesn't do, but when we would basically, if you open up the, the cover in the morning, uh, and you can, and that doesn't mean remove the cover completely, just raise it up. Uh, basically, what we did is raise it up like this, you know, all along both sides. But uh, I, I'm pretty sure, I feel pretty confident that if we, if you open it up only from uh, till about nine o'clock and then close it back up, uh, that we that. Uh, that gave better yields than, than, for example, remove it completely or or uncovering and leaving it open until noon and then closing it back up. And again, it was primarily due to keeping the insect pests out. So, a fellow in Kentucky, an entomologist in Kentucky, has been doing something similar. And what he does, uh, or one thing that he's worked with, is just putting a cover on and, and closing it up completely. In releasing, in, in the insect that he was using was a, was a squash bee, and it's a, it's it's not like a bumblebee, you know, it doesn't move around. What he said he does is he'll have some squash plants that are outside, and when he sees one of those in there, he'll just pinch the flower and close it and pull it off and toss it in there, and that way he gets some pollinators inside there and just leaves them in there. So yeah, that's another, uh, you know, if you had big enough ones, you could probably 
put a bumblebee hive in there or something like that too is an because that they'll pollinate squash pretty good. So, so yeah, a lot of lot of things that can be. We're, we're just getting started with it really. So there, I think there's a lot of possibilities for this type of approach. And again, in with squash, in the squash bugs, uh, and and the squash vine borer, the problem is, uh, you can control them with insecticides, but it's you, you've probably got to use more insecticide than you really wish you did on, on a crop that you're harvesting almost, almost every day or every couple days. Uh, so that's the problem in there. And uh, I don't know, it, it's, it's very, it's tricky to keep the squash buzz controlled in squash. Most of the time what happens, you know, you'll, uh, you'll do some, you'll try to do some control and all, and, and to control the adults is very difficult. Basically what you, probably the logical thing to do is at least try to keep the immatures controlled as they hatch out but eventually that plant is going to succumb to it and, and the plants are going to go down if, if you, you know, really used insecticides and followed the label and didn't use more than you should kind of thing. So, uh, so I, and plus all the time that takes. So this, with this, uh, you know, just a matter of putting your covers on, which takes a little bit of time, but uh, the materials I think will hold up. You, you could use them for several years and all. So. Thank you. Great. Thank you.